Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and this week we're looking at budget DSLR photography. Now, I speak to a lot of people about getting into photography and the main thing they tell me that stops them from doing so is prohibitive cost. You walk into Jessup's and nowadays a budget entry-level DSLR is probably going to cost you £350 or more. For a lot of people, especially those that might think they're not going to, you know, keep hold of the hobby and keep on doing it in the future, it's a lot of money to, to put out on a gamble. The fact of the matter is though, that I've spent two weeks on eBay and I've picked up three cameras with, and three lenses and the cheapest combination shouldn't cost you more than 80 pounds. In fact, the camera body here, this Nikon D70, should only cost you 20 to 30. It's not very much money for a camera that admittedly is getting on a bit, but is able to take fantastic photos and will give you a huge amount of control. So, how do you go about buying these cameras? Before I talk you through what I've bought, I just thought I'd give you some tips. The first thing is I'd say don't get yourself into a bidding war. If you're buying used equipment, you're probably better off either looking for items that finish at odd times of day, so you know halfway through the working day or very early in the morning, say four, five, six o'clock, when less people online are bidding against you, or on eBay specifically, and this is true of um, Facebook, Marketplace, and Gumtree, make an offer that you're happy with paying for that camera. I'd suggest using eBay's sold items um, feature, which lets you check the price that items have sold for in the past in order to give you an idea of the current market rate and make a point of not spending more than that. You don't want to get caught out spending more money than the equipment is worth. Because one of the things I really believe in is all of this equipment could be sold tomorrow on eBay and after fees, I reckon I wouldn't lose any money at all. So you've gone on eBay and you, you say to yourself, I want a Nikon or Sony or Canon DSLR. Do some research about the cameras that you see available for the price point that you're willing to pay. Check reviews. All of these cameras are old. There's hundreds of reviews on the internet pretty much for each of these cameras. And you'll be able to find easy ones at places like DP Review, um, dare I say Ken Rockwell, though I really don't recommend them. <laughs> Um, and get a general gist of how well the cameras did, any issues that you need to look out for. It's very much like buying a used car. Once you've said to yourself, well, my budget is say 100 pounds, have a look at the cameras that are sold. Quite often, cameras will be sold body only. What that means is that you'll receive just the camera and usually a battery and a charger, though do check that they're included because they can be very expensive and you will need to buy your own lens. For the most part, that's the best way of doing it. Buy the camera and the lens separately. This D70 actually was bought with a lens. It was bought with this lens over here. But the reason I snapped that up is because, and this is another thing I want to bring across, sometimes people make slight errors in their listings that you can take advantage of. So when I was searching, I searched for Nikon camera and lens. So basically, I was trying to find someone that perhaps wasn't entirely sure what they were selling or didn't care. And they just said it was a Nikon D70 with a 50 millimeter lens. Well, what kind of 50 millimeter lens? Nikon's 50 millimeter lenses could be a manual E-series lens from the 80s that will cost maybe 10 to 15 pounds. Or it could be a full on 50 millimeter 1.4 AF a G style lens, which is worth, you know, two, three hundred. Now the lens that it came with was actually the one I've mounted on this Nikon D300, which is the 50 millimeter 1.4 AFD. And I quickly did some research and realized that that lens was selling for about 140 pounds. So I put in a bid or rather an offer of 70 pounds for both and the seller accepted. I gave him 70 pounds stayed slightly hopeful that I'd end up getting what I'd paid for, and sure enough, I did. So what you need to do is look for those odd listings, look at the photographs very carefully, perhaps confirm with the seller via message that that's what you're going to get, and buy them that way. You can end up with them much more than you would have got for your money otherwise. Don't forget, there's a lot of people bidding and making offers against you. 
The other thing I'd say is once you've worked out your budget and what kind of cameras are available, look at lenses. Think about what you want to photograph, what excites you. If you say, I want to take lots and lots of portraits, buy a 50 millimeter lens. Once you, um, once you take into account the fact that these smaller sensors mean that lenses have a crop factor, i.e. you need to multiply the focal length because of the smaller sensor, this becomes a 75 millimeter lens, almost a perfect focal length for portraits. And it's a 1.8 as well. If you bought yourself a 50 millimeter, uh, sorry, an 85 millimeter 1.8 lens, it's gonna cost you two, three, 400 pounds. But one of these on a crop camera will give you the same view as a full frame camera, i.e the perfect sort of portrait style lens for much less money. Now, don't get me wrong. I realize that I do a lot of eBaying and if you don't, that might sound quite daunting, but you can still look at the cameras that are available in the use section. Um, just put in the brand and say DSLR or the brand name that you're looking for and um, digital camera, and you should get lots of options. And you've done your research, then just make a fairly low offer. Say the seller's asking £100 for a D300, make an offer of 80 See if they accept it. They might be wanting a quick deal and just want to get it over and done with. They'll take your £80. You've saved yourself 20 on the average going rate. So it's a win for you. They get their money quickly. Everyone's happy. That's what I did with this D80. Now, D80 seems to be selling for between 40 and £80. It has a 10 megapixel sensor, it was made in 2006, it can shoot three frames per second. It is an all round more advanced camera than the D70 and has a much larger monitor on the back. And it represents good value for money. So again, body only, I made an offer on one that was, I think it was um, selling for 60, I, I offered them about 40, 45 pounds. They accepted, got the camera a below market rate, a great way of buying these cameras. Both of these cameras will take great photographs. I don't think you need to worry too much about specifications of these cameras. I started off with a Nikon D1 in 2006, 2.7 megapixels. And I remember vividly I had a Nokia N95 at the time with five megapixels, but you couldn't compare the photographs you get from these cameras. They are so much better because the sensors are bigger, the pixels are bigger, the quality of the glass in front of those pixels is better. Therefore, you'll get better images. And the ability to play around with settings and choose manual mode and see your changes in real time taking a photo, things you can't do really do on a camera phone. And even if you can, they're usually software driven and don't work too well. You can on these. So once you've sort of picked out your camera body, which I think what you should start out with, you need to look at lenses. You should probably account around half your budget if you're looking at the lower end on a lens. So the 50 millimeter 1.8 AFD will cost you around 30 to 50 pounds. The 18 to 70 millimeter 3.5 to 4.5 AFS um, DX lens will cost you around 40 pounds as well. Again, I picked this one up for about 35, made a lowish offer, got accepted, everyone's happy. And in combination with the D80, I think that's such a powerful combination. The, um, the resolution of the, of, the, of the sensor being 10 megapixels means you want a nice good bit of glass on it. This has Nikon's various um, glass coatings and sort of lens uh, innovations, which gives you good quality. And 18 to 70 millimeters becomes uh, roughly 24, 25 to um, 105 ish, give or take, which means that you can take really great photographs with what is, a very cheap combination of cameras. For those of you that say you wanna be able to grow into a camera, and I really support that, I think it's, as I said, great way to learn, sort of having manual modes and, and just learning as you go. You could buy something like a D300. The D300 is a professional level camera that was sold in 2003, uh, sorry, 2008. I don't know why I said 2003. It has a 12 megapixel sensor and it's currently selling for around 100 to 150 pounds on eBay. I paid 100 pounds for this one. This particular camera for 100 pounds is in immaculate condition. It hasn't even taken that many photographs. Um, you can't really judge any of it as bad. There's no scratches or marks. Um, it came with the box and all the original accessories. 
So overall, a fantastic deal. This gives you an unprecedented level of control. It uses Nikon's pro level menu system. So you have your mode switch here rather than using a mode dial. It's a little bit more advanced to use. I think this is gonna take you longer to get used to if it's your first camera. But, and I have, can't stress this enough, every single one of these cameras has a fully automatic mode. In this, it's P for program mode. Um, it'll do most things for you automatically. You do need to choose when to flick up the, the um, flash. But other than that, it's the same as auto mode that you have in both of these. That means that if you wanna buy this camera and actually just take some photos and let the camera do the work, you can. But when you want to actually sort of sit down and learn what the different settings do, what, aperture, what the aperture does, how the shutter speed affects your images, you can do that with these. It's something you just can't do on most point and shoots, most bridge cameras, and definitely not mobile phones. The D8, uh, I don't know why I'm getting this model number so switched around. The D300 can take six frames per second. It's great for nature photography. It's great for sports photography. At the time when this was released, it cost 1,500 pounds, which is what I paid for it, um, well, 12 years ago. You can also get a battery grip for it um, that uses this little, um, compartment on the bottom. And the reason I want to show you, what reason I want to show you this, if I can get it off, I don't think I can, um, is that cameras like this have hidden features, essentially. I really can't get it off, I'm guessing the people didn't use it. But essentially, if you take this rubber uh, grommet off, you can then add a battery grip. Now the D80, can ha you can add a battery grip, but it doesn't change performance at all. It merely adds, adds a second battery. On this, when you add the battery grip and the battery from the Nikon D3, you can take eight frames per second. That is as good as a lot of professional cameras even today. Definitely consider if you want to take nature photographs, a camera like the D300. Now, as you can also see, there's three flashes on this table. I was gonna include flashes in this video, but I decided not to. I'm gonna do a, a video very soon looking at Nikon's flash range from a used perspective, the SB910 through to the SB600. And so I went on eBay and started buying, buying some of those too. Now, the reason why I've included these in this video is there's a very important lesson to learn here, which is even when you do your due diligence, when you buy from bid, uh, buyers or uh, sellers that you, can, you think you can trust, and when they package them well, you can still have unfortunate situations where the items that arrive don't work. This Nikon Speedlight SB800 was top of the line, I think in 2003 or so. It is a perfect on-camera flash for any of these cameras. It does look quite big and bulky, but I promise you the quality of light that you get from these, camera, these flashes is so good that it will completely change, say, your portraits that you take, because you can sort of take the light, flash it off, off the ceiling for nice diffused light. This costs 60 pounds. Great flash. Works all right. The hinge is a little bit um, weak after many years of use from the looks of things, but it works perfectly. And then we have the two SB900s. Two, well, I bought the first one. I was raring to go, really looking forward to it. Switches on, all looks good. Press the uh, test button and absolutely nothing happens. Unfortunately, in transit, the flash bulb must have broken and that's it. The cost to repair this would be 150 pounds and I only bought it for 90. The um, seller didn't even want me to send it back to them. Uh, we just agreed to sort of call it a day. I got my money refunded such is life, one of those things. So I bought a second one. Another SD900, again, good condition. Looked great when it arrived. Didn't come with the box, but had the pouch and soft case, etc. Great. When switch it on, so the first thing you do, isn't it? You try and switch it on, it didn't work. So I, I opened the battery door and I saw what you can see now, which is horrendously corroded batteries. Bugger. So I took the batteries out and I spent an hour cleaning the uh, contacts and uh, cleaning out the uh, battery bay. It would start up, but something's broken in it. It will flash by itself whenever it wants to. 
it won't really talk to the camera. Completely bust. So I spent 200 pounds on flashes. These two are 90 to 100 pounds each. Both of them don't work. I've had my money refunded. So it's not like I've lost out. I do feel sorry for the sellers because I, I genuinely believe that neither of them was trying to rip me off. They just both, one didn't check the battery compartment and the other, it was damaged in transit. But you can have problems like this happen. There's no reason why this couldn't have happened to any of these cameras. So make sure you buy from sellers that you can trust. The best way on eBay is buying from people that have, let's say, at least 50 feedback positive and um, with recent transactions that you can sort of tell they, they know what they're doing. And even then, when things go wrong, be ready to, you know, potentially dispute the transaction with eBay, tell the seller honestly what happens. I always share photographs if I can. So with the corroded one, I, I sent them a photo as I went and I was like, I sent them the first photo going like, this is quite bad. There's clearly something gone wrong here. Sent them more photos as I went and they were very, very apologetic. But they can go wrong. So the thing I'm trying to bring across here is do your due diligence. Don't buy a camera that says parts or not working. Make sure you buy one that says used in good condition. Look at the physical condition as well. And actually, perhaps that's something that's worth spending a few moments on. On each of these, I've looked for cameras that don't show much wear. So this D70 had the screen protector in place. The screen protector is in good condition. I couldn't see any scratches on the photos that I looked on, uh, um, at on eBay. The screens all looked good. The, the black finish looked good. It hadn't been scratched away. The corners, especially around here, looked good. So I, I know, knew that this camera was in relatively good condition. So that was fine. Again, the D80, the exact same again. Looked around all the edges on the photographs. They all looked good. It didn't look like the, the camera had been mishandled. There were no knocks or bumps. That's exactly what you're looking for. And the D300 is literally pristine. It's, it's unbelievable. It looks so much better than my D300 even did after a few months. Um, there's no knocks, scratches, bumps, like this is a magnesium alloy body, um, so completely metal. Um, it, yeah, honestly, it's unbelievable how good condition that camera is. Same thing with the lenses. Um, make sure that you're buying one that doesn't have much sign of use, because if there's one that looks like it's been used and abused, it may well not give you the best photos anymore. But again, all of these, very cheap. Like this combination would cost you 200, maybe 240 pounds for the camera and the lens. That's a 50 millimeter 1.4. The D80 with the 1870 is gonna cost you maybe 100 pounds or less. And the D70 with the 50 mil 1.8 is gonna cost you 70 pounds. That is not much money for a lot of camera. Again, these speed lights cost three, 400 pounds when they were new. This SB800 cost 60. The SP900 costs 90 to 100 pounds. The SP900 is a pro grade flash from about 10 years ago. Like this has a lot of life left in it. If you buy one from say a hobbyist or enthusiast that hasn't abused it. it, has great features. Like I can't bring across that's so much bang for your buck. Like if you went out and bought Nikon's latest and greatest flash, the SP5000, it will cost you over 500 pounds. Even if you buy the SP700 that's been around for years, it's still gonna cost you 300, two, 300 pounds new. That's a lot of money. Buying used equipment can save you so much. That is what I'm trying to bring across with this video. If you spend some time and you need to spend the time, so if you want to do it, make sure you have time to research, make sure you have time to search on eBay. None of these were the first ones I saw. I spent time over the course of two weeks looking at listings, looking at buyers, trying to understand what the market was doing because it, it, it does fluctuate quite heavily. When a new model gets introduced that replaces these older models, so even if they're several generations out, it kind of knocks everything back one generation. So when you get, say, I mean, at the moment, the D500 is the essentially the replacement for the D300 and D300S. When that gets replaced again, if it does, I would expect the price of the D300 to drop again. The D80 is probably close to rock bottom. I think at 10 megapixels, it sort of still holds its own. I think that's the spec that's, that's helping it hold its value. Um, but sort of 40 to 60 pounds is not much money for a camera like this. Um, but it might still go down to say 20, 30 perhaps. 
um, in the future, and the D70 is at rock bottom. I don't think you're going to get a DSLR for much less than this. Yes, it's the first generation of Nikon's DSLRs. Yes, it doesn't have great low light performance. But if you're taking photos in bright daylight, family days out, portrait sessions with friends, just trying to learn, investing £60 on a, or £70 on a combination like this is just great and so much better than spending your money on a even a used compact camera. The thing that makes these work is the size of the sensor and the electronics that process the images. That is what you're paying for. You're paying for the technology. Six megapixels, if you don't have a very powerful computer, your computer's gonna be able to deal with those files easily if you want to edit them. There's lots of free software that you can get from Nikon and, and other places that will allow you to edit your images. The D80, 10 megapixels. Again, most cameras are going to be, uh, most um, computers are going to be able to deal with the images that come out of them. And the D300, 12 megapixels. Will you start getting to the point where you probably need slightly better hardware than the D D70? But I think most computers will be able to handle them. There's nothing stopping you from buying pro-grade equipment from a few years ago to enjoy and learn with. Just want to come back once more to the Nikon D1. So in 2006, when I bought it, people really did think I was mad. I wanted a pro-level camera from, two, sorry, from 1999 in 2006. The camera really did have that tiny sensor and it was hopeless in low light. It really was unusable. But the fact of the matter is that that camera allowed me to learn. I am pretty much a self-taught photographer. I did take some courses here and there, but for the most part, I was self-taught. And it just gives you the freedom to experiment that you just don't have otherwise. And that Nikon D1 could take, I think it was around five frames per second. It, it had all the same manual controls as this did. It didn't have the great big screen and the menu system that these have, but it was a great way to learn. The last point I would like to make is about storage and computer power in the cameras themselves, because that is the one final thing that can trip you up. The D70 and D300 both use compact flash cards. Ideally, if you buy a camera like that, I'd say try and look out for an actual memory card that coming with the camera. So this D1, uh, sorry, D1, D70 came very nicely, and I was very pleased with this, with a one gigabyte SD, uh, sorry, compact flash card. Very big memory card. Um, one gigabyte you can virtually not find them at all and I think it's enough for a couple of hundred um, photos perfectly fine you might also then need a compact flash card reader remember that because if you need a compact flash card reader there again going to cost you another 10 20 pounds which is a cost that you need to um, estimate and count with now the d300 also uses compact flash cards as I said, it can take six frames per second. So you actually do need a slightly better compact flash card. So I bought one brand new off Amazon. This is a 16 gigabyte SanDisk um, Ultra card and it costs 16 pounds. So one pound a gigabyte, perfectly fine. Um, you can get cheaper SD cards, but compact flash, it's one of those things. So you can find them. Again, make sure that you have the ability to take those photos from the camera because some of these cameras don't have the ability to just plug them into the computer and use them as a mass storage device. This one does, I don't think the D70 does. So you'll need that compact flash card reader as well. The D80, and this is true if you're willing to spend a little more of a lot of Nikon's current, um, sort of not current, but more, more recent cameras um, that are aimed at entry level users have SD cards. You will likely have these lying around um, you can use any size card in these. And I'm using a 32 gigabyte card, which will allow me to take two and a half thousand raw images. So it's quite a lot, of, quite a lot of photos. So I know this has been a really long video, but I hope you found it interesting. Um, if you want to get into photography, I think user equipment's a great way to do it. If you have any questions or comments, and I'm guessing if you're thinking about getting photography, you may well do so please do put them in the comments below. I really look forward to hearing about the journeys you guys go on to um, when you buy used equipment and then take photographs. If you want any opinions on your used cameras, 
again, questions in the comments and I'll come back to you. Please do give this uh, video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really does help. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you stuck with us all the way to the end. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks very much. Goodbye.